In this video, I'm going to show you several different ways how to prevent slipping off your air mattress while camping. In this video, you're going to learn some beginner techniques that will help you stop slipping off your air mattress at 3 a.m., which is super frustrating with your sleeping bag. Thank you very much to subscriber Bill Cole for the idea about this video on how not to slip off your air mattress. You're going to get a bunch of tips in this video, so hopefully one will work for you. If you're a subscriber, or even if you're not a subscriber, please send me a message about ideas and questions you have that I might help you in your adventure, travel, camping, climbing, or whatever. Thank you very much. Literally the first suggestion, I cannot emphasize this enough, is simply start looking for a campground and a campsite way in advance of where you need to stop. Look at the topography and where you're heading on your backpacking trip or your expedition and really start thinking 15 minutes and even half an hour out, oh man, am I going to go into some steep cliffs where there's no way I'm going to find a campsite? You may want to stop earlier to get a better rest for the night. That's something to consider. The next tip that I'm going to give you is use your Z-Rest on top of your Thermarest or your air mattress or whatever it might be. When I use this combination, it really helps prevent slipping of me sliding off the air mattress. The challenge is that the, the foam pad, the Z-Rest, slides off the air mattress while I don't slide off the Z-Rest. So that's frustrating, but here's the solution. Get your favorite color of paracord and then simply tie, let's see, you get a piece here. Just simply tie a loop around the pair with the paracord around your Z rest, your foam pad, and your sleeping bag, or I mean, and your <laughs> air mattress, and then use either a fisherman's bin or maybe a sheet bin to tie this knot. That way, once you size it up, you always have it with you and it totally works. And once you do that, you use your uh, big nest of your big nest of paracord and you tie it on there you can totally have no problems with sliding and slipping off your air mat plus you get the advantage added insulation technique from the z rest check out the link below to my book how to tie knots and survival and you'll be able to find out how to tie that sheep in and the fisherman's bin without an issue. The next tip that I'm going to give you is use a drawer liner. This cheap stuff that you can get at your big box store or online. I'll put links below to all the products in this video. Do note, full disclosure, I am not sponsored by any product in this video that I show you here. So that's a real important to show that this is legit. These are all techniques I've used. But using this ultra grippy but not sticky drawer liner you put this stuff on top of your air mat and you will not slide off because it is really really grippy without being sticky which is really important so when you put that material on your sleeping bag and you put that bad boy on there you will not slide off and slip now i've got this tips these tips and more in my book, Adventure Expedition 1. Check it out if you got a chance. You don't have to buy it, but I highly recommend it because all these tips and tricks I've got in there, it'll really help you out in your camping. The next trick, which is a really clutch one, is to get a tube of seam grip or aqua seal. Either works just fine. And in the subtle droops in this particular air mattress, not the ridges, but the troughs of the air mattresses or the dimples, depending on which one you have. If you put lines of seam grip, not wide, just like that and just little lines, or you can use dime size dimples or something, just give it a little try. Put a little bit of seam grip in there, put a few lines, spread them out as you need, wherever you're sliding off. This stuff works. Now you gotta make sure to let it cure and all that before you put your sleeping bag on because it will weld your sleeping bag to your air mattress. That I promise. Also, avoid putting it on both sides because you don't really want to get trapped on the tent if you need to move around. I just put it on the side that I sleep on. In theory, you're supposed to use the silver side on the air mattress. 
I could never tell the difference. So I just put the seam grip on one side if need be. So that seam grip is clutch. Just stay tuned for my super trick at the end of the video where I give my other non-weight bearing, non-chemical, non-cost technique. But the next one that you can use is rolled up foam. This stuff is super inexpensive. You can get it wherever you can get foam. You put this on your air mattress and you put the, you simply sleep your sleeping bag over the foam on your air mattress. And let me tell you, you will not slide off because that foam is super grippy. Now, this foam doesn't uh, compress down too much, but you know, it's not that big a deal and it really makes a big difference. The next trick I'm going to give you is if you bring a synthetic shirt with you, which you probably brought a change of shirts with you or synthetic, don't use cotton of course, but you want to use synthetics because it's going to take a little bit of abuse, is if you simply slide the synthetic shirt over the air mattress, that will disconnect your sleeping bag from the air mattress and this shirt on here will help reduce the amount of slipping and sliding that you have on the air mattress. It really saves you a lot of trouble. The next one, here's another trick using clothing you already brought is, let me get stuff out of the way here, is take one of your extra jackets or shirts or whatever you might have and roll it up just so it sits under your booty here when you're laying down so it creates a little bit of a lump and that way when you lay on your air mattress here when you're laying down in your air mattress that little lump prevents you from scooting downward it's super trick i mean you don't have to have anything extra or extra special to make that happen and it works very very well next consider that if you have to sleep on a slope make sure to pitch your tent so your feet are facing downward on the slope rather than sideways. You do not want to sleep where you're rolling sideways in a tent. That is miserable because you're going to squash yourself in one end of the tent. And that brings me to my next point. If your tent is too big and you're scooting all around, consider getting a one person tent where it's literally the width of your body, almost like a coffin. And then really you won't do any rolling around unless it's really steep, but just make sure to line up your tent so your feet are downward. That also prevents the booming headache you get when you wake up. My next tip after adjusting your tent and making some tweaks is if you are amenable to it, the big Agnes system, instead of Western mountaineering, I love Western mountaineering, but Big Agnes definitely came up with a great idea in that they put a sleeve on the back of their sleeping bag so you can actually slide a foam mat or your air mattress into the sleeve on the sleeping bag. And that way, the air mattress stays with you no matter what. There's no way it can slide off. However, if you like to roll and keep your mouth instead of being stuffed into the side, and it has a few downsides there, but the sleeve on the, uh, on the Big Agnes is really pretty slick. Now the next trick that I use is what I do is when I'm sleeping, depending on what I'm doing, uh, I'm sleeping in wherever, I use some of my kit and my gear to actually pack me in. So I might put one backpack here, I will put another backpack here, and I will literally jam myself together so that way I don't scoot off and I have my sleeping bag on me and I have no problem sleeping. So I've got this mass of stuff packed into me without crushing the down to create a cold spot. And that's another way so I contain myself. If you're a bit claustrophobic getting past the, the uh, mummy bag and everything, this might not be the best technique for you, but in a pinch when you've got a lot of gear and kit with you that you need to pack yourself in, let me tell you, it's super helpful to do that. My last tip, and this is the, the trick you might not have ever thought of, is it's very possible that you are overinflating your air mattress. What do I mean by that? 
see how mushy my air mattress is? It's not terribly inflated at all. If you overinflate your air mattress, you're virtually guaranteeing that you're going to scoot off that bad boy at night. So what I do is it seems a little uh, limp, but once I lay on the air mattress, I actually am just fine. My butt doesn't hit, my head doesn't hit. When I roll over onto my side because I side sleep a lot, I make sure to bounce up and down so my hips or my shoulders don't touch the ground at all, but no more than that, and I get a much better night of sleep. So that is my last tip about not overinflating the air mattress. It takes no weight, no effort, but don't go crazy. Yeah, I know it reduces the insulation a bit. However, the big advantage is that you don't have to do anything. Reduce that, you sink a little bit more into the air mattress, and you'll scoot off that bad boy a little bit less. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below to my books, Antarctic Tears, Adventure Expedition 1, Lost at Windy Corner, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, How to Tie Knots and Survive in the Outdoors, and my 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as check out links below to my show, World Beyond and Antarctic Tears, where I take you to the South Pole. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your non-slip air mattress.